Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. As you can tell by the title of this video, I'll be going over how I was able to prep and uh, test for the Azure Solutions Architect Expert Exam and receive that certification within a month of uh, prepping and, and testing. So um, a little bit of outline of the video is I'll be talking about um, kind of why I chose to take this exam, uh, a little bit about my background and why I chose to take the exam. Um, I'll be going over how I prepped uh, to take the exam, uh, some of the course materials that I went over, um, and then at the end of the video, I'll be going over um, the outcome of getting the exam and the certification, um, and was it what I expected. Um, so let's get straight into it. Seen a lot of people change, but stay down, you gon' win. Seen some people switch up, stay down, you gon' win. A lot of people changed up, stay down, you gon' win. Seen some people switch up, stay down, you gon' win. A lot of people changed up, stay down, you gon' win. A lot of people switched up, stay down, you gon' win. I done seen a lot of people change, but stay down. All right, to start off, um, a little bit about my background and why I chose to take the test is um, at the time, this was about a year ago, uh, Walt in January, scheduled it for February, um, took the AZ303 first, and then a week after that, I took the AZ304 and passed both. So a little bit of background is at the time, I was in a DevOps engineer position, but I was looking to transition over more to a solutions architect position. So um, I was already working primarily within the Azure cloud space, so um, I decided that uh, transitioning into that role, um, even though I was looking more for cloud agnostic uh, positions, I'm, most of my uh, background experience is in the Azure cloud space. Um, already having that, that knowledge within the Azure cloud, I decided to go ahead and go for that one first. Out of the three clouds, I planned on taking the AWS uh, Solutions uh, Architect exam as well as the GCP a professional architect exam. So I decided to tackle the Azure uh, one first. So going into the exam, um, some of the things I prepped for, um, I would say 90% um, of that uh, prep was done through Pluralsight. And they actually have a, uh, a pathway that you can go through um, to study exactly for this exam. Um, it includes things like taking labs, um, pre-test and then course material that you can watch um, as a video uh, through their video platform. That was basically 90% of, of how I was able to study for the exam. The way I approached it is I tackled the 303 first. The 303 uh, mainly tests you on implementation and how you would uh, implement different solutions within the cloud um, through security, compute, storage, um, and all things like that. I decided to take the 303 first, even though you can take the 304 or the, uh, the, the 304 first and take the 303 next, but you do need to pass both exams in order to get the certification. Going through that course material, um, the way I planned it out was wrote down all the, um, based off of the skills outline, I kind of tick marked all the ones that I, um, since I told you guys that I already had that background experience within the Azure Cloud, I kind of uh, marked the ones that I wasn't 100% familiar with, and I tackled my studying by going through those skills uh, first. Um, so basically each skill that you'll be tested on will be outlined um, within the uh, exam prep uh, off, off of the Microsoft certification website. Um, so that's how I, uh, I tackled the, the, the studying is when I scheduled the test in January, um, the first thing I did was go through the course material, the things, pinpointed the skills outline that I wasn't 100% on and watched uh, all the course material, read um, the documentation on those things um, and to, to get my knowledge up on those. The next thing I did was actually take practice um, tests. So I would say within uh, the, the week uh, or two weeks out before taking the test, um, all I did was practice. So I scheduled it in January. Um, that whole month, I basically, like I just mentioned, um, went through course material, learning uh, videos, training labs, um, and then with that two weeks uh, right before taking the test, I did nothing but do the practice exams. So while I did those practice exams, um, the main thing that helped me was to go through the actual practice exam, um, and then each question that I got wrong, I would 
mark those and study up on those questions that I got wrong. So how I studied up on those is I would go back on the course material. Mainly I didn't actually need to rewatch videos, but I would go to the actual documentation. Um, Pluralsight is good with um, actually pinpointing where um, you can find information on, on the, the questions that you're, you're tested. Um, so I, I was able to find the documentation on the, the answers that I got wrong and I would basically restudy up on those. So uh, two weeks prior to taking the test, that's all I did was uh, go through the practice exam. And then I went ahead and, and uh, took the, the first test. Um, I didn't schedule both tests at the same time. Um, I just scheduled the first one just in case if um, I didn't pass it, I would definitely want to reschedule the first one before um, having to learn this, what's needed for the second one if I didn't pass the first one. So um, I scheduled it in January, um, took it in February. Uh, within those two weeks, after those two weeks of taking practice exams, I went ahead and uh, went in and, and took the test and passed um, the 303. So next was the was scheduling the 304. Uh, based off of my results from the 303, I was confident enough to schedule the 304 out two weeks. Um, so taking the 304 um, that first week, I just went through course material rather than uh, taking a whole month to go through course material since the 304 is is mainly on design. So um, the 304, I, I scheduled that the first week I went through course materials, just like a, how I did for the 303. Um, I would watch, I would out, based off of the skills outline, I would mark all the questions or the skills that I wasn't 100% on, watch the course material on that for that whole first week. And then for that whole second week, I went ahead and um, did nothing but practice exams for the 304 that were provided through uh, plural sites. So that's basically how I was able to prep and pass. And then um, after that that week of, of, of going through practice tests, uh, I was able to pass the 304 after that week. Um, so passing both of those allowed me to get the Azure Solutions Architect Expert exam. So now I guess I'll talk about the actual outcome of getting uh, certified um, in, in Microsoft as Azure Solutions Architect Expert. At that very moment, once I got the 304, I was able to update my resume. I let my recruiters know, because at the time I was applying for jobs, but I was I let, did let my recruiters know that I'm in the process of testing for, for both the exams. So um, at this point, when I finally received it, I updated my, updated my resume and let my recruiters know that, hey, this is the skill that I uh, recently obtained and this is the actual position that I'm looking for. So I would say I applied for over a um, hundred uh, solution architect type uh, title jobs um, just to transition out of the that DevOps engineer um, role. And it didn't actually go as, as I expected. So um, while I did get a, a, a new job, um, by the April timeframe. Um, so I started applying uh, January, February and was able to acquire a new position um, in April, but it was not the exact uh, one I was looking uh, for, which was the solutions architect. Mainly um, having the, the, the certification um, with the companies that I interviewed with and the recruiters that I talked to, um, they were actually looking for people who had like 10 years of, of experience. So. Besides the fact that I got the uh, certification, um, I did try for the position. After about, um, like I mentioned, I started applying in February since that's when I actually got the uh, certification. So February, March, April, after about the a month and a half, I kind of switched my focus um, after I was getting so many denials from uh, companies uh, for that uh, position or I kind of switched my focus back to, okay, let me look at the actual description. I was looking at the description of the, the job descriptions of the um, places I was applying for, um, but I wasn't more so focused on the actual title. I was more so, at this point, I was more so focused on what the job description was asking for rather than looking specifically for a solutions architect title. So one of the um, positions I uh, applied for um, it didn't have the solutions architect title, but it was um, based off of the description. It basically was a, a solutions architect. So um, I did end up getting that role. The outcome from what I expected uh, from 
obviously from initially um, taking the exam is that some companies would see that as a check mark, um, but no, they were actually a lot of, of, of companies that were looking for that certificate plus five to 10 experience. So um, I do have at least three three years experience within the, um, the field. So um, I did count that um, as towards uh, what I was looking for. So I wasn't looking at something that was totally unachievable. Obviously going into this, um, you see the job requirements that says that you need five to 10 experience, but uh, based off of how you um, basically value yourself, you should be able to say, um, whether or not you 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 uh, want to apply for those types of positions. That's basically the outcome of of of, of getting that that certification. Um, and kind of my plans now um, is is still to I still haven't gotten the AWS or the GCP um, Architect Solutions Architect or for AWS it's Solutions Architect um, and then for GCP they call it Professional um, Architect. So I have not. Um, I'm looking at taking the GCP one next. Um, but aside from um, the job outcomes, it did give me the, the other outcomes that I was looking for, which was, um, I guess, kind of that, that recognition within the workplace. Um, so even though I was applying for different places, I just wanted um, that type of knowledge, type of recognition um, within the current um, role that I'm in. Um, I knew I had the knowledge, so I went ahead and uh, tackled the exam. Um, just to get that that recognition as well, and that outcome did come out as expected um, within um, the the position that I was in at the time. I would say that was pretty much it um, for as far as what I expected. Um, so uh, the time that I took to prep and, and take the exam, I definitely would say it was worth it um, getting that. So um, that's pretty much it in this video, um, guys. Leave a lot of comments down below. Um, about if you're looking to take the exam. Um, I just actually looked at it and uh, the requirements are always changing. So before it was the, you had to take the 301 and the 302. Um, that now changed to the 303 and the 304. And I see that it's actually going to change in March um, that you only have to take the 305 in the administrative um, uh, exam. So uh, leave a comment down below if you guys are actually interested in taking this. Also, um, if you took the test um let me know what your outcome was and and if um that came out as expected um and yeah that's pretty much it for this video i'll see you guys like that if you knew what it took i get paper like a book